A very good evening to you and welcome to Business Today on Channel I. And this is your weekly business show where we give you an in-depth look at today's business landscape. So we are ready to give you an in-depth look at various topics today. So do stay tuned in. Well, on business today, today we'll be talking about startups and also on green tech startups and on how you could build a successful venture. So those would be the topics today. So to do the honors, we do have a personality in the studio. So let's check out who our personality is. Mr. Heminder Jayavira is a recipient of Eisenhower Fellowship. He obtained his B.Sc. in Electronics Engineering from the University of Moratua. As a serial innovator, entrepreneur, Hemin the co-founder Gendo MedTech Startup, which has a U.S. patent, and Turu Green Tech Startup focused on reforestation. Also, he is a director of Effective Solutions IoT company Venture Frontier Lanka and Vibhava Solutions. Hemin the started Mora Ventures Incubator at the University of Moratua in 2017 and launched 30 startups in two years. Well, we do have Mr. Heminder Javira in studios with us on Business Today. A very good evening to you. Good evening, Sarika. Thank you very much. And we are honored to have you here with us today. And we will be talking, as I mentioned, on green tech startups and also on startups overall and also on how to build a successful venture. But before we get into all that, we introduced you as a serial innovator. Can you tell us what and who is a serial innovator in a layman's point of view? Yeah, before going into serial part, I think you have to understand what is innovation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think uh, innovation is, you know, doing something new. But I would say it's a bit more than that. So innovation is uh, doing something new, sure that there are, there are users in what you are trying to, what you have built. So I think uh, when it comes to serial, what I do is my talent, which I have seen is, of course, I've been trained to do an engineer, but I... Uh, and the latter part, I realized I'm not that good in engineering. So I started looking at what, what my real talent is. Then after many years, I realized that my talent is finding talent. So, so that's what I'm using here. Uh, so I tend to look at uh, the talent vari in various parts, maybe universities, young talent. And I look at uh, coming up with di different innovations to the market. So I co-founded about two to three startups and then also I invested my money into a uh, couple of startups as, as, as well. So that's my, that's why the serial part is. So basically I'm, uh, I focus on one area for some time and then uh, make sure that it is on its own feet and then forward, look, look forward for other innovations. So that's, uh, that's my, uh, my job. That's interesting <laughs> because it's not like you're gonna stick to a certain uh, area only, but you yeah. try to explore different areas. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But I make sure that the previous one continue to do, continue to make money and right. continue to go into the market. So that's uh, only once that is ensured only I moved into other areas. And that's basically to improve the other areas as well. Exactly, exactly. And you uh, co-founder Gendo, it is a med tech startup and it also has a US patent. Can you tell us more about this? So that's uh, actually it's uh, one of the University of Moratua uh, finally a project that turned into this level, which is actually started about four to five years ago. So what we did was actually we started looking at uh, emulating what the Singhala Veda Mahathya is doing. He takes your pulse here and try to identify the entire you know illnesses in your body. So we thought, okay, there should be some science behind it where you can do it or maybe automate some of the parts that the Veda Mahathya does. So then we learned there is this so-called uh, endothelium, which is the inner cell layer of your blood circulation. So it's your blood vessels. And then... Uh, through a lot of, after reading a lot of research articles, we realized that your cardiovascular health is related to how healthy your endothelium is. So what we did was, we started uh, developing a product, uh, basically using a pulse oximeter, we took the signal, and then we built an electronic device to <coughs> capture the entire signal, the blood vessels, the blood flow. And then uh, through an artificial intelligence method, we developed a method where you can uh, screen, uh, this is not diagnosis, but screen, uh, cardiovascular diseases basically to tell you how healthy your cardiovascular system is. So that's the product that we 
patented in the US market as well and we got investment uh, about two times from various parties and now it's ready to go to the market of course there are few steps has to be done uh, but uh, we have done about 1000 tests uh, in Sri Lanka uh, especially at Asiri hospitals and uh, results are really good uh, we will be publishing some of the results as well and now of course we can at a much cheaper rate we can give a report on your cardiovascular system which is your uh, i mean talks about heart uh, is issues to uh, cholesterol to various other issues in your body so that's basically like uh, getting to know beforehand so that exactly. you can do further testing if you further feel like there's yeah. something wrong in it and what we wanted to see is rather than going into expensive medication or surgeries to identify cardiovascular diseases much before and change your lifestyle and cure that uh, so that's where we want to be as you very correctly okay. mentioned uh, previously that uh, as a serial innovator you shift from one field to another once that has improved and you see that everything is happening uh, smoothly in that specific area you were involved in and then you started something called Thuru. It's a green tech startup and it's focused on something completely different to what we just spoke of. So this is about uh, reforestation. Can we, Correct, yeah. uh, can you highlight more about Thuru for us? So Thuru actually start, we started uh, about four years ago. My, myself and my co-founder mm -hmm. Asanka, we, we saw this uh, whole degradation of the entire environment in Sri Lanka, especially we saw, we've been uh, born hikers. I used to hike since I, the age of 14. And I've been to many places in Sri Lanka and then I realized <coughs> that some, some of the places I used to travel about say 15, 16 years ago have changed. For example, uh, there's one Babarakanda waterfall, the highest waterfall. There were a lot of water some time back. Now you can't see that because the, the, the water, uh, you know, the, at the top of Bambarakanda, a lot of areas have been now cleared and people are farming those areas. And <coughs> we see that uh, the water is reduced uh, if you take the same season. And also during the rainy times, you see a lot of water coming in brown color, not the silvery waterfall that we used to see. So that water now is dragging it's all the... contaminated. Exactly. The right. con exactly taking the entire soil, mm -hmm. uh, soil erosion is happening. So all this climate change that we talks about is not going to happen in 100 years. It will, in your lifetime, you will face that. So we wanted to do something about it and we realized that, of course, stopping the deforestation is the number one. Then the second one is actually there's a lot of forest are being cut for various uh, human uh, needs and, and urbanization. You know, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, you know, make sure that we start reforestation at a higher rate. And the only way that we can do is we have to make sure that a lot of people start reforestation. So the, the first thing that we developed was an app. So now that app is actually used by about 12,000 to 20, uh, 15,000 people. And we have got about 50,000 trees planted using the app. So the app, you can plant a tree, show the app uh, to the entire world that you have planted a tree. And also it prompt you to look after the tree as well, which is the more difficult part. Planting trees is easy, but looking after the trees, mm -hmm. uh, which is more difficult. So it prompt that as well. And we have been seeing that a lot of people now using the app, especially the young people, and start planting trees. So that was our starting point. Right. And then on that, we developed a lot of other technologies. We developed a drone that can mm -hmm. you know, dissipate seeds. Then we developed with the uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology support, we developed a a seed pot that you can even post to anybody's place. Uh, we have done about 30,000 seed pots now, sent to about 30,000 houses. And then we started Thuru.telki, our website, which is actually, if anybody wants to plant a tree, you can buy anything that you want from that uh, website. And we can deliver that, uh, I mean, it could be plants, it could be seeds, it could be uh, grow media, fertilizer, uh, you know, anything that you want to plant a tree, everything you can buy from this uh, website and we deliver to your home, home uh, as well, if you are in uh, Western province for the time being. And uh, speaking of uh, improving innovation mindset, now at the very beginning you mentioned that uh, people need to understand what the term innovation is. So we need a lot of youngsters getting into this. So how could one improve their mindset on this? Yeah, very good question. I think that's where Sri Lanka is lacking. I mean, there are enough and more e experts in Sri Lanka. Maybe we have the engineers, scientists, all these people. Uh, if you look at the number of scientists in Sri Lanka, number of uh, you know uh, engineers in Sri Lanka, we should have a good uh, innovation index in Sri Lanka. But if you look at the global innovation index, we are one of the lowest, and our innovations are not coming out that 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 well. So what we have seen is that innovation is not a not something to do with technology. Even with no technology, you can do innovation. It's a, just a mindset change that you have to uh, understand. For example, uh, one simple thing I will give you. 
say if, if you get a brand new idea, super idea, like a billion dollar idea, usually what, what Sri Lankans and a lo lot of South Asians do is, no. you don't want to tell that idea to anyone. Because you want to hide that idea. You don't want to... Uh, even no, you to want to keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. So yes. that's the number one innovation killer. Uh, because whenever you get an idea, what you have to do is you have to share that idea. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a risk that somebody will take your idea and mm -hmm. maybe if it's another Sri Lankan, maybe your friend might take the idea and build it before you. But don't worry about that. There's another Sri Lankan who's trying to, you know, do something. Mm -hmm. So that's the mindset that you have to build. So you have to be very, uh, you know, Make sure that you know you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about those things. If you are if you are worried about those things, you don't have that innovation spirit. You don't have that entrepreneurship spirit. The main thing is you need the new idea to actually be practical and to be, be practical, there. Be practical, exactly. And you have to make sure why you are sharing is mm -hmm. you have to get it validated from the the public and fine tune it at a much faster rate. So that's the whole idea of design thinking and open innovation and all these concepts that have been practiced globally now. But gone are the days where you do R&D in a closed environment and you try to do it so after years and years of R&D, put it to the market and try to test the market. Those are old, uh, you know, school of thought. Today we are changing it. There is open innovation. We even, we, when, when we get an idea, we try to share that idea even with your competitors also. Mm -hmm. So that's the model uh, nowadays practice. So I think we need to move into that innovation mm -hmm. mindset if we want to change the game in Sri Lanka. And uh, Mr. Javiru, as you mentioned that everybody needs to get into this and uh, the youth especially, we need to see them becoming innovators. But innovation involves costs. So when you're just out of school or if you're schooling, you can be any age to be an innovator. So how can they face this situation? Yeah, so it depends on what type of product that you're doing. So for mm -hmm. example, if I take uh, a product like Thuru, I didn't get any investment from an investor. Of course, I, I uh, pitched it in various uh, platforms, forums, got some grants initially and developed the app in initially and then of course now it's a, uh, you know, I don't know to get any investment for, for, for the current, uh, you know, uh, product. So it's, it's, you can build it from the money that you are generating from the product. Mm -hmm. But certain products, of course, if you are looking at say biomedical like uh, Gendo, there is a cost involved. So then, of course, you have to make sure that you need to pitch it to the right person, right people, and get the investment. But remember, if you want to get investment, it's not about the product. It's not about how good your marketing plan, your business plan. It's about you, which is important. So if an investor wants to invest in you, they want to invest in you. I'm talking about not the banks. I'm talking about the like angel investors, people mm -hmm. who invest in your products. Uh, the main criteria is how good you as how trustworthy you as a person for that person to invest in you so i think you have to build that uh, you have to make sure that you should be able to market yourself show the experience uh, market yourself and show that how trustworthy you are so i think these are the things that people uh, tend to believe in when before uh, getting into uh, investing in, uh, one of your ideas and uh, Mr. Javira, you did uh, have these uh, couple of startups like MedTech Startup and Thuru as we spoke of. So you s mentioned that uh, you didn't get any support for Thuru per se, but uh, it was all your investment and you started uh, that business. So how about building a good ecosystem for startups in Sri Lanka? Wh wh what do we lack actually? So I think number one is that we need more people thinking about this innovation. As I mentioned, people should start start thinking about ideas, start sharing mm -hmm. ideas. And the other thing is we lack this group thinking, working as a team. So a lot of people, especially the experts, try to work uh, on their own. But ideally, I don't think in the, the past few centuries, nobody has come up with an innovation on their own. Innovation is a team game. So you have to make mm -hmm. sure that you work in a team and that team has to be diverse. Again, there's a problem even if you go to universities, we can see people are in say one department, say computer engineers in one department, that doesn't work in innovation. Innovation, you have to make sure there's a team who are coming from different multi skill set into one, one, one place. For example, uh, an engineer or a technocrat mm -hmm. working with a marketeer, marketeer working with a designer, designer working with a maybe a lawyer or a legal uh, person or maybe a businessman. So we need to see that uh, the, the you know, collective uh, effort uh, and also different multi-skill set of people coming together. So I think that we need to build from our school level. I think 
I was just about to get there because it's quite interesting uh, that you know we need everybody to team up to come up with an innovation and you need different other sectors to join in. Exactly. So uh, don't you think that there's, there's this com competition built in every individual, every student in the school days where we tend to you know try to fight or rather compete with each other. So don't you think that leads to the point where we try to hide our innovation, hide our ideas and be the only one, be the number one? Isn't that kills innovation. That kills, I mean, most of the problems in Sri Lanka, maybe we are a highly individualistic education system that we mm -hmm. have. Everything is decided by how many marks you got. And you don't know to share because the other person might get more marks. Better marks. Better marks. So mm -hmm. in a real school environment, if I see innovations to happen, I would see the number one in the class works with the the last one in the class. That is a, you know, there's a better chance of getting innovations out of that kind of combination. So we should have stop the idea of having backbenchers and... No, nothing like that. So the backbenchers should work with the frontliners. Mm -hmm. Or maybe um, uh, more than number one and number two in the class, number one and the, the, the last one has a better chance of innovating. So I think that that diverse skill set is what, what is required. And we had to entice school children from that age to right. promote those group thinking, the teamwork, I think that's the way, even not in not not only school, but even at the university level, even beyond that, even companies, we have to make sure that uh, that environment is being supported. So these are not the things that we have to spend a lot of money, uh, give a lot of uh, investment. These are the your usual habits. So that the habitual change has to happen in order to see that Sri Lankan innovations, uh, you know, super scale innovations coming out of Sri Lanka. So speaking of school level, I think now it all depends on how you're treated at home as well. So as parents, uh, they also play a massive role in uh, telling their children that, uh, you know, we need you to study, but they need to identify their passion as well, isn't exactly, it? So what exactly. do you have to say about this for the parents out there? Exactly. I think uh, because a lot of people, I think today in Sri Lanka, your talent, your destination is measured by how many marks that you score in your term test, your A levels, O levels, I think we have to stop that. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go into A levels, you shouldn't do A levels, you shouldn't go to universities, nothing like that. But we have to identify every kid's talent at very early, early stage. Some people may be, they're good at art. Some may be good at, uh, I mean, maybe you don't see that hidden talent, but you have to make sure that you bring out that and support that hidden talent. So that talent might be, uh, you know, when you, mix up with another person's hidden talent that could be the greatest innovation that is coming out of Sri Lanka. So I think we have been missing those things. We have been covering those links. That's why we see super engineers, super doctors in Sri Lanka, but when it comes to innovations, nothing. So everything mm -hmm. is covered because we don't see that, you know, the, the, the real chemistry working with people. So I think the innovation is a people's thing. It's nothing about technology. I think we have to make sure that everybody, the school, uh, authorities, the teachers, especially the parents should understand that. I think that's the only way we can come out of Sri Lanka because we have been a developing country for almost now 70 years after independence or maybe more than that. The only way you can change is innovations, nothing else. Nothing else and uh, we need to actually let the world know that we're capable of bringing up new innovations, exactly, inventions. Yeah, exactly. So how, how can one create high-tech innovation and value such venture for the economy, which is vital, isn't it? Like overall, we, are, we depend on the economy. So I think um, for a country like Sri Lanka, one of the things that we have to understand is, uh, it's not only Sri Lanka, there are so many other countries really trying hard. For example, uh, countries which were much below in terms of Sri Lanka have come up really, really fast in the couple of maybe last decades or so. So we, we have to understand we can't be world beaters in every area. For example, if it is electronics, there are a lot of countries who are really good and it's very difficult to match their skill set. But as Sri Lankans, what we have to look at is where we have this intrinsic qualities. For example, say products like say cinnamon. Cinnamon is only in Sri Lanka. You don't see anything in any other country. I mean, if you go to India, China, it's not cinnamon, it's cashier. Then if you look at the products like uh, graphite, which is the number one graphite, the most purest form of graphite is since from Sri Lanka. There are so many other minerals and various other plant-based products. And there's a certain talent that we have. So there are intrinsic qualities. So we have to identify those intrinsic qualities and build the value addition on top of that. So it's a technology that we built on our intrinsic quality. Then we can be world beaters. So then we automatically get the, the competitive advantage compared to because 
uh, if you come up with a tech product using graphite in Sri Lanka, nobody can compete because we have the, the resources. So we have to build on that. We should try to focus on something which we could be unique. Exactly. And exactly. also which we can improve as well with time. So Technology has to be there. We right. have to build the innovation on, mm. on top of that. But you have to build on what we already have. Which right. We have so much of resources in Sri Lanka. I mean, forget about countries like Singapore and various other countries. We have, we have a, a country with a lot of resources. So build on those resources and build the technology on, on top of that. So the main thing is identifying what we have and what we are unique for exactly, exactly. and then try to build on it and try to focus on that for innovation exactly. and we've come towards the latter part of the program as well uh, and we did mention towards the beginning that we'll be talking about how we could build a successful venture and about social entrepreneurship how can one do that so i think social entrepreneurship is again or social innovation is pretty much same innovation only thing the difference is that you are looking at a social problem and whatever that you make out of it, even I mean, you can make profits, you can make money out of it, nothing, I mean, it's not a charity, but that it can't be super profits, that profit has to be put back into the course that you are fighting for. So that's the difference in a normal innovation or entrepreneurial venture versus social uh, innovation or social entrepreneurship. But how do we build that is actually, it's more difficult to build a social entrepreneurship because- You need the trust. You need the trust, you need, I mean, you won't see a lot of profit. It's a, it's a business model innovation that is required because it's, for example, if you look at turning plastic uh, into something, uh, plastic trash into something useful, it's not easy. It's not it's easy. It's not easy. There's no money in it. So you have to come up with a uh, business innovation to right. come up with that kind of thing. So it's more difficult. It's not like dreaming of being a one day millionaire or millionaire definitely, in a day rather. Definitely, definitely. I mean, if you look at Sri Lanka, mm. if you take, the, I'm not talking everyone, but mm -hmm. if you take the majority of Sri Lankan uh, so-called entrepreneurs, which are, I'm, I'm not saying they are entrepreneurs, uh, they are the people who, you know, move certain money into another place and, you know, get a commission and make millions of, m those are not entrepreneurs. You can call them uh, businessmen, but real entrepreneurs are the people who are solving problems of the people. So that's the real uh, definition of entrepreneurship. And we see very few real entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka, where we see is actually basically people maybe buy something from outside, sell it in Sri Lanka, get the uh, monopoly in that area, become a billionaire. And m majority of Sri Lankan businessmen are like that. They are not entrepreneurs. So we need more entrepreneurs coming out of Sri they Lanka. They have to come up with their own thing. Their own thing. They try, try to identify a problem in Sri Lanka and solve that. They are problem solvers. So I think that need a lot of dedication. So I don't think it's a uh, thing that you can you know, think about today and make millions of rupees tomorrow. A lot of dedication is required. You have to have a long-term thinking. You should be able to do a uh, you know, recurrent work. So a lot of people think doing innovation is an exciting thing. But in my experience, it's a boring thing to do. You <laughs> have to do the same thing over again and again uh, until it, it, it fine-tuned to the level that you can really. So that's what happened to Thomas Alva Edison when he innovated or invented the, the light bulb. Light he bulb. tested about 800 different materials to identify the the, the real filament, the best filament for this light bulb. So I think that's the kind of people that we require. We want people to work on with a lot of dedication for a long term to come up until you perfect the product. But then you have to have the methodology, you work with the customers, you have to work with the people, you have to get the feedback really fast and run it at a very faster pace. The main thing is you need to have a good rapport with the people you are going to sell this product exactly. to or maybe the people you're going to work with or you need to build that trust build and that trust and work in a team so i think that's if you can do that if you can lead that kind of effort you can easily become an innovator and never give up and never give up yeah, never <laughs> that's give exactly, up. exactly what thomas already sent taught us i guess exactly. 800 times and exactly and, and you don't have to have come up with a lot of ideas mm -hmm. you can always get ideas from others when you team up you see that you know you get a lot of ideas from others and you built it uh, so you don't have to be an idea person to become an innovator i think those are some very good advice for all the budding entrepreneurs out there who's tuned into business today on channel i today so with that it's time for us to wind up today's edition of business today as well we would like to thank you mr hemi the javira for being a part of the show it was really nice talking to you and very informative thank you very much thank you sarika thank you very much and with that, we conclude this week's edition of Business Today. Have a pleasant night.